Good morning and welcome to virtual worship with Maple Grove United Church. It is wonderful to have you with us whenever and wherever you're sharing in this service. We give thanks for your time and your worship and pray that this opportunity to connect with your faith brings you comfort and strength. A special thanks to the Chancel Choir who are accompanied by Ian Sadler on piano under the direction of Dr. Deborah Henry. Thanks to our volunteer, Darlene Morden, who will be reading the scripture today. As well, thanks for the technical support of John Duffin and Joan Vinnell Cox. Enjoy the service and God bless. As we come together, we acknowledge this land called Turtle Island that was inhabited long before the settlers arrived and displace the indigenous peoples and their communities. For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. Their relationships with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. We are gathered on the traditional territories of many different First Nations peoples and acknowledge and give thanks for their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. Let us prepare our hearts and our homes for worship by listening to the prelude, Gavot in D by J.S. Bach. We say now our call to worship. While our world is a storm of trouble and grief, in worship we find a time of calm and renewal. We seek the courage of God's word planted deep in our hearts. Let us slow to hear God's truth for us. We seek the comfort of God's grace refreshing our soul. Let us reflect to remember God's promise to us. We seek the compassion of God's love, nourishing our lives. Let us share with those around us God's blessings for us. We say now our opening prayer. Let us pray. Energizing God. On this new day, let us jump up to proclaim the splendor of your care for us. Fill us with wonder and guide us to walk forward with faith and gratitude. Renew us with your love so that our faith in your transforming power leaps from our hearts. Recharge us with the immensity of your mercy and grace that we whoop praise for your goodness and whisper thanks for your gentleness. In the name of the risen Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, let our lives shout hallelujah. Amen. Let us lift up our voices in song, together in praise though we worship apart as we give thanks to God for this day and the blessings we find in it. We sing now the opening hymn, Your Hand, O God, Has Guided, Voices United, number 274. 
Today's scripture reading is from Acts chapter 3, verses 1. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 19. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have, but I have, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. 
Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit, begging at the temple gate, called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man, whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. God's word for life. Thanks be to God. The turn of the seasons this year have been challenging. With each new phase, spring, summer, and now fall, I remember last year and wonder, what's next? Are we rounding the corner and flattening the curve? Or can this still get worse? With every glimmer of hope, there's a greater urgency and yet also a greater tentativeness. We bear more scars and less certainty. And my fear that this year is still waiting to trip me up is, I think, a big part of why I find today's reading so nurturing, more than that, utterly uplifting. Jumping up, the beggar stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. Maybe you've felt something similar when something entirely wonderful has happened and you feel so much joy that the energy is rushing through your body and you just can't keep still. And so it brings me joy to imagine the beggar that day, overwhelmed by the immensity of what has just happened, moving round in a daze perhaps, dizzy with the delight of his healing, wanting to show everyone who was there, and at the same time, not wanting to stray far from Peter, who had brought this miracle about. Walking and leaping and praising God, utterly transformed by Christ. And yet, the beggar's newfound energy, as joyful as it is, is not on its own what lifts me up. Because the beggar is not the only person in this account whose life is transformed. Just look at Peter in his own way, walking and leaping and praising God walking straight into the temple at the hour of prayer, straight into what was effectively the headquarters of the Jewish leaders 
who had arrested Jesus and had him killed. Remember that immediately after Jesus' death, Peter and the other disciples were so terrified of what might happen to them that they hid behind locked doors, paralyzed by fear. Now look at him walking and leaping and praising God, leaping into action. This is the man who on the night Jesus was arrested claimed he didn't know Jesus' name. He called down curses, according to the account in Matthew's gospel. Such was the vehemence with which Peter tried to reject the name of Jesus. And here he is, continuing Jesus' ministry, healing the beggar directly and explicitly in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and praising God, telling those present of the glory of God's love, proclaiming the power of the risen Christ. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong. It took me a few read-throughs of this passage to realize what is perhaps the key element of this one line. When Peter says, and by faith in his name, I don't think he's talking about the beggar having faith. It's an easy assumption to make. The beggar is healed. Peter attributes that to faith. Ergo, the beggar has faith. Except nowhere in the reading are there any indications that the beggar believes in Jesus? Perhaps he doesn't even know Jesus. The beggar is at the temple because that's where he goes each day. And when he sees Peter and John, his request is for alms. Healing isn't on the beggar's mind. The faith is Peter's. Peter's faith in Jesus' transforming love is what heals the beggar. Peter's faith that throughout the Gospels has appeared timid and fragile has been transformed by the risen Christ. Now Peter speaks boldly, heals resolutely, and proclaims Jesus raised from the dead. Peter's faith in Jesus' name has made the beggar strong and has made Peter strong, transformed by Christ. And this is the transformation that I want to be a part of, the transformation that reminds us that our faith can make us strong at a time when we are being confronted by so much, tested every day, I am hungry to affirm that my faith in the risen Christ can make me strong. That transformation, that promise is there for us in our reading this morning because the beggar and Peter are not the only ones in this account whose lives are transformed. There's a place too for all the people. All the people who saw the beggar, who heard Peter, and who were filled with wonder and amazement. The reading doesn't tell us what happened to them specifically, but as thousands more are baptized and become believers, in the months following Jesus' death and resurrection, I think it's clear many were transformed by what they saw and heard that day at the temple. And we can be too, acknowledging the unknowable wonder 
of God at work in the world, in miracles as every day as fruit emerging from flower or the changing color of the leaves. Affirming Jesus as author of life, who has erased the grip of death and who writes hope into our lives in each new day. Amazed perhaps by the difference it makes to remind ourselves that we can call on God at any point and that just knowing God is with us can give us strength. And who couldn't use a little more strength in their days? Will Willimon was a bishop in the United Methodist Church in Alabama. He tells the story of a visit he made to the homeless ministry of one of the churches in his district. It was a ministry that prided itself on treating the homeless people it served with respect, right down to serving meals with proper china dishes, flatware and glasses, nothing plastic or disposable. While Willimon is there, he notices a volunteer at the kitchen sink, up to his elbows in dishwater. He knew the man was a lawyer and from a large, affluent church in the area. And the contrast with his current surroundings could not be greater. As Willimon recounts, he greeted the man with what he thought was an encouraging opening remark. I think it's wonderful that you are here washing dishes for the homeless. Good for you, the dishwasher mumbled, not looking up from his work. Have you always enjoyed ministry with the homeless? Willimon tried again. Who told you I enjoyed working with the homeless? The man asked. Have you met any of the homeless out there? Most of them are so addicted or messed up that nobody, not even their family, wants them home. Well, I, uh, that makes it all the more remarkable what you are here doing. How did you get here? The man looked up from the dishwater and replied, I'm here because Jesus put me here. How did you get here? Was the lawyer shaped by his faith? Certainly. Out of place and uncomfortable? Absolutely. Was he made strong? Without a doubt. Transformed by Christ. Praise be to God.
Maple Grove United Church is ever grateful for your gifts. The offerings you can... That was Jesus Loves Me, and we give thanks to our musicians, Pat McKee and Patty Wanless. Time now for our offering. Maple Grove United Church is ever grateful for your gifts. The offerings you continue to give through your envelope givings, par or one-time donations, or by using the Donate Now button on the website. Our offering today and every day is an act of love. We give from what we have and as we are able, but always we give in hope and faith and love, trusting that God will honor our courage and generosity, blessing your gifts with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us dedicate our offering now in prayer. Triumphant God, we bring before you now our gifts, perhaps not of silver or gold, but all that we have to share at this time. Bless our giving and inspire those who receive this offering to seek to redeem the suffering of your children near and far. Bless our helping and inspire us to seek to transform the needs of our communities in your name. Grant that by faith in your name, we are made strong to share your love with those around us. Amen. We offer now prayers that unite our hearts as we say our pastoral prayer. Let us pray. Revitalizing Lord, you who have known suffering and despair, who have cried out from pain and rejection, be present in this moment as we share with you the burdens weighing down on us and those we love. In this COVID world, we struggle with illness and fear. We pray that you support and sustain those worn down by poor health, going through tests or coping with treatments. Be with caregivers and healthcare practitioners and nurture them that the care and advice they provide brings ease and healing. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, dear Lord, make us strong. In this divisive world, we struggle with hostility and rage. We pray for an end to misinformation and divisiveness and ask that you suppress the fervor of those who try to foster hate and suspicion. Help us bring tolerance and compassion, calm and openness to everyone we encounter. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, dear Lord, make us strong. In this ever-changing world, we struggle with the unknown. We pray that you guide us through the choices and decisions we face and steady us to help those around us in the face of uncertainty. Grant us patience and clarity for the changes we pursue and give us peace and courage when we are surprised by life's events. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Dear Lord, make us strong. Amen. And hear us now as we pray in the words that Jesus, our teacher, taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We come now to our sending hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be, Voices United, number 506.
go into this new week sustained by your faith in the risen Christ that will make you strong. Whatever troubles you face, let God's mercy lift you up. Whatever joy you are blessed with, let God's grace leap in your heart. And may you praise God and witness to God's love in each and every moment of your days. Amen. so much for being part of this Zoom service and worshipping with us this morning. Please join us again next Sunday for another virtual worship via Zoom. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>